Thank you for that. Welcome back to the show, Eleven Twelve. It's time we check in with one of our friends at Pro Wagering. They do all the research. Before you make a bet, go to ProWagering.com and check it out. We have J.D. Sharp with us once again. J.D., it's Thursday night football. Seattle visits the Cowboys. Seattle does have a winning record, but they've lost two in a row. They got destroyed by the Niners um, in their last game. And Dallas, if you're looking at uh, uh, a 13-game home winning streak, uh, three consecutive double-digit underdogs beating them by an average of 30 points. They're really rolling right now, and they're trying to keep their eyes off that December 10th game against Philadelphia coming up. But how do you see this one? Yeah, I think I think the Cowboys should easily win this game. I mean, it, that, it's just not a good matchup for the Seahawks at all. <laughs> Walker's probably hurt. Geno Smith doesn't handle pressure very well. The Cowboys apply it in my, like like very, very well. Obviously, you have the year that Deron Bland is having. You have the year that Dak Prescott's having. I mean, look at Dak. He's 10-1 to 1 to win the MVP right now. He's got 23 touchdowns, six interceptions. The, people think the Eagles' pass D is good. It's not. They've given up 24 touchdowns this year, so next week he'll have a big game. He'll have a big game today, most likely. I mean, no one on no one on the rest of his schedule. His, his team is is very solid with Lamb playing at a very high level, and Gallup and Cooks and and uh, Jake Ferguson and, and Pollard and Dowdle out of the backfield, along with a great offensive line. He's only got six picks on the year. He's not fumbling. I think Dak's got a real chance to win the MVP. I think at ten to one, you know, Mahomes at plus four thirty, he's not going to do it. Hurts at plus one fifty, he's going to have a couple of problem games. They're coming up. He gets sacked a lot. His completion percentage isn't very high. Yeah, he runs it well, but. I think Dak Prescott's going to be the MVP this year, and I think tonight uh, we're, we're going to see more proof of that. I wouldn't be shocked at all if the Cowboys won this game by 20, 30-plus because they just – what their, their strengths exploit the Eagles' weaknesses and, and vice versa. Again, Geno Smith only has 12 touchdowns through the air this year. Kenneth Walker's probably not going to play. Yeah, I, I just think that the, the Cowboys alone, they, they might score 35. It might be like 35 – 35-21, I could see something like that. I could see 35-17, but I think the Cowboys have a pretty explosive game today, Rick. So you're definitely on the over then? You know, I'm back and forth on it. it, it, it or the Eagles, or, or, I'm sorry, or the Seahawks could get, they could get totally skunked. I mean, they could only score 10 points. It could be 35-10 and the game goes under. You know what I mean? So I'm not definitely on the over. I think I'm definitely on the Cowboys, though. You mentioned Dak, and since that, horrible game against the Niners on October 8th. He is on one of his best roles. He's thrown 18 touchdowns with just two picks in that time. And and I correct me if I'm wrong. I know you're kind of up and down on Dak over the years, right? I have been. I have, but I thought that he was very, very overrated. I thought that he didn't diagnose blindside pressure very well. I thought that he fumbled in the big games. And I'm not the only one that thought that a lot of the country did, but I think there was just an element of he never, he didn't have the weapons that he has now. Brandon Cooks is the number one for 20 teams in the NFL, and he's their number three. He still runs a 4-3-7, 4-3-6. He's got great hands. He runs great routes. Jake Ferguson is is a very serviceable tight end. He's got a great defense. He's got an elite offensive line. I I just think that he has the weapons this year. He obviously put in the work to to, to get better in the offseason. I think he's getting – and Aaron Rodgers did a – you know, he does that Pat McAfee show every day. He did a really good interview today, and he, he just he pointed out some some very subtle nuances that that Prescott has added to his game. So yeah, I, I have been down on Dak, but this year uh, I think that he is having an elite year, and I believe that he should be the MVP front runner. And he, the only reason he's not is because he's Dak Prescott. But that means that you've got value. So if you're listening to this, ten to one MVP Dak Prescott, seriously consider it. By the way, I'm also wearing a black tank top with necklaces doing this show. <laughs> um, <laughs> is that what America's come to? Um, the the kid, DeVito, and I mentioned in that loss to the Raiders that, you know, he threw a touchdown, he threw a pick, but I thought he was very athletic. He was getting out of a lot. He was getting away from Crosby, and, and I could see why that, uh, you know, the, the commanders offered him more money. The Patriots offered him, but he wanted to sign with his hometown team. They cut him but put him on the practice squad so now with two straight wins he's the talk of new york and you got daniel jones out for the season making 40 million a year do you see this being a brock purdy type of situation where he if he keeps playing like this they'll let him have it or they go back to camp and say look you're making 200k 
we have to let Daniel Jones be the quarterback. I, I think that they're going to let him have it at this point. I think that the, just New York has kind of turned on Daniel Jones. And, and let's keep in mind that DeVito's done a really good job with the weapons that Jones had. I mean, Jones had Jalen Hyatt. He had Sterling, not Sterling Shepard, Wandale Robinson. He had Saquon Barkley. Yeah, I mean, he, he didn't have the offensive line a couple of times. Andrew Thomas was out. Evan Neal was out. But it's not like DeVito has new weapons. He's just performing at a higher level. And you're right. He is he is relatively athletic, which he was at Illinois. So this isn't, this isn't a huge surprise. So, yeah, I, I think that they are going to let Jones walk. And hopefully there is an issue here moving forward in the NFL where they realize that, yeah, the salary cap is very high, but you are spending way too much money on quarterbacks. You're spending too much money. You're drafting them too high under the circumstances, and you are setting back your franchise. You are setting back your fan bases when you are doing that. Because when a fan base, you know, when when a, a rabid fan base, <clears throat> when a team doesn't doesn't do very well, and they put their future behind a quarterback, and that quarterback is expected to perform for for two to three years, but in this NFL where the defenses are hyper athletic now, where the I mean, where defense is, is now it's it's almost like the 50s or 60s, and I kind of mentioned this before, but you have a lot of defenses that are ahead of the offense. And I think that's because you know, these quarterbacks aren't exactly pass first anymore. That's, that's part of it. But it's also just the athlete, the caliber of athlete now, you know, being, being a, a number one, being a, a six foot five, 265 pound DN that runs a four, four, five, like a Michael Garrett, like, or like a miles Garrett, that is the ideal situation. You're still going to make that 15 to $30 million a year, but you're not playing quarterback. You're not playing an overly, you know, a, a, a position that requires a ton of film watching, uh, really or intellect at all and so I think that there's there is a an example of that being made and so there's just a lot more talent on the defensive side of the ball than there used to be and these quarterbacks are are behind they're behind the eight ball as far as I'm concerned and but the quarterback is such an important position in football that if, if they're not performing at a high level then the fan base just sees a terrible product and then they then they lose interest in their team as well so I, I'll, I'll be honest the NFL is very lucky right now because the product is so poor with so many teams, especially with the quarterback play, they're lucky that sports betting exists because sports betting is why people are watching a lot of football right now. There he is. He's on the betting side. Last question for you, J.D. The Eagles are the best team in football. They're 10-1. and one. They're at home, but they're a home dog. They are, they are getting three points. The Niners come in at 8-3. and three. Um, we saw Jalen Hurts in a big game down 10 to Kansas City pull his team back and win. We've seen him pull his team back and get to a Super Bowl. We haven't seen that from Brock Purdy yet, but the Niners have a great defense, and they have the leading rusher in McCaffrey and some great weapons uh, to throw to. This is the game of the year so far. Are you surprised that the Niners are favored? I am not surprised in the slightest. The Niners are the superior team, in my opinion. The Eagles are very arrogant. Sirianni is 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 becoming a, a bit of a hated a hated coach through the league. Uh, Charvarius Ward is going to be a great matchup for AJ Brown. He's one of the only corners who can you know match up with him size for size. I mean, Charvarius Ward is one of the most physical cornerbacks outside of probably Darius Sneed in the entire um, NFL. Brandon Ayuk is going to give Darius Slay fits. Who is going to guard Debo Samuel? Trent Williams when he plays, the Niners score thirty plus points every single game McCaffrey is going to get his yeah you have Chase Young and Nick Bosa both of those five-star Ohio State defensive ends both top five picks are now on the Niners on both sides you've still got Fred Warner you've still got Eric Armstead inside yeah Hufanga's hurt but his replacement's okay too I, I think the Niners are rightfully favored in this game and there's a reason why the second I saw that line I think it was like Niners maybe plus one or something like that. I made them a five unit play and I sent it out to my guys the second I saw that line. So yeah, I've got the Niners money line as my biggest play of the year this year, Rick, for a reason. I remember Chavarius Ward had that pick six in the Super Bowl and I thought, oh, the Niners are going to win. And they didn't. <laughs> uh, there he is, J.D. Sharp. Always good stuff, man. Appreciate it. Pro wagering. Hey, thanks a lot. All yeah, right. Absolutely.